PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 3, Part 2. The next model that we're going to create is using the mirror command, and it's a thin part. So, new. You'll notice that my cursor, I don't have to move it. It goes directly there because of our productivity enhancement, changing the location of the cursor based on its default position. We set that with the mouse, remember. Okay, I'm gonna select the front datum plane again as my sketching plane. Extrude. And I'm gonna right mouse button and construction center line. I'm gonna put a center line down the middle here. Two points, middle mouse button to finish it right mouse button and line chain and I'm going to select two positions of different lengths if I pull the cursor off middle mouse button to finish it middle mouse button again right mouse button and I'm going to select fillet And now, middle mouse button, right mouse button, and see what my options are. And there's rotate resize. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything with a window. And when I do that, if we go and we look at some of the options that are available, mirror becomes active. If nothing is selected, mirror is not available. So select mirror. And also I have a axis construction center line that I put in there. And you have to have this for the mirror command to work. Click on that. And middle mouse button. And then left mouse button and it's deselected. Now, you've got these little blobs here showing that it's an open section. And I actually made a mistake when I did this. If I come back here and I click on check, it's going to say, hey, something's wrong. You don't, you don't have a closed section. So I'm going to add a line here because I made a mistake in the very beginning. I went a little too fast with my default selections. I should not have pre-selected my front datum plane, but it's no big deal. Now that I have this, you'll see after the section is considered valid, middle mouse button to finish, check. And in this case here, again, I want symmetric. so. Select symmetric and right mouse button. I can click on thicken section. And you can see what it does. And that's what I should have done in the very beginning. And now I'm not going to finish the command. I'm going to go back into my external sketch and I'm going to click on that bottom line and I'm going to delete it. Now, if I click here, let's see if the warning comes up. It does not. Because I selected thin or thickened sketch, it used to be called thin, it now allows me to have an open section. Now, I want to put a hole down the middle I could put an axis in there. I could click on axes and I could select either from the model tree or from the model itself one and then if I hold on the control key I could select the other one the two datum planes and the axis will go down the middle. I click OK or middle mouse button. It's still active. So if I select the whole tool and I hold down the control key I can pick the top surface as the start and it will keep the axis as the other placement option here. I have to have two of them. And when you have an axis, you have to have one other selection. That's the start surface, and then its location is with the datum axis. And as far as the depth goes, I want it to be through all. I can also come up here and click on this, through all, middle mouse button. Now, we'll do something a little bit more here. We'll click on Applications. Now, 
let's see. Uh, no, we won't do that. <laughs> I was going to start another aspect of this one, but I think I won't write at this particular point. So this is the using the mirror tool in the sketch itself. Now, I'm going to go over here and search for a command, sheet metal. And here is my convert to sheet metal. That's what I was looking for before. It's under the group here, so it's hidden. And it's going to ask for the surface for the driving surface. And it's usually the surface in here where it unfolds from. Now, you'll see that it has converted this into a sheet metal part, and you can't go back. So you can't turn it back into the other model, regular part model. So let's go up here and um, let's select flat pattern. And this becomes available to complete the command, which means all the items here that are necessary are, have been selected, the minimum amount. And you can see it completely unfolds and creates a flat pattern. So let's close this one. We'll go to the next. And the next one is going to be a revolved feature, so new. Part. Under model, we're going to do revolve, not extrude. And we'll do something a little bit different. We're going to select on the right datum plane to model. And right mouse button and section orientation and set as vertical. So let's click on this here and see what happens. It'll rotate the sketch. The way you look at the sketch is kind of irrelevant, but the z-axis now is going to go down the middle for this. And we're going to select right mouse button axis of revolution, and we're going to create an axis of revolution. If we created a, an axis, a construction axis, we would then have to convert it into an axis of rotation, revolution. So, and what's going to happen, you'll see here, right mouse button, line. By the way, I, should, I hardly ever use this, but if there are other options for line. So if I come here and select line, and I'm going to create this little shape. Now, you notice LL. Try to make these different lengths so that the actual uh, constraint doesn't make it equal. If I hit my right mouse button very quickly here, twice, it'll cancel that. So these will not be equal. But in general, if you just sketch them a little bit different, then they won't be equal. We're going to make a little kind of a bullet shape. Middle mouse button twice, like so. I'm going to rotate it around. I like to see it in pictorial. You can always go Control D, but a lot of times the pictorial you want is better to be found when you're just rotating it yourself and you get something that looks like what, you're, what you want it to be. Come on, we check up here. It's going to revolve that around. And you'll see that you actually have a drag handle here. If you didn't want it to be 360, of course we do. You can see we've got some choices up here that are automated. But we want the full shape here. Check. Now, the model is active. And what I want to do is I'm going to come over. I should say the feature is active. I'm going to go over and I'm going to select one edge, hold down my control key, and continue to select those two. Right mouse button, round, then right mouse button, and add set. And then I'm going to select the edge here, hold down my control key, and my edge here. Now what that did is gave me a separate 
round radius for that set. So you can see this is 10 point or whatever it is. Yeah, 10. And this is the other one, which is at 6. So it's all part of one feature, but it's got two separate selections on there. See what else we covered in this particular one the rounds we did do a section we did a section before and you can let's go control d and let's go to view and section and let's try something about the y direction and again you can add a color if you want you can do your 3d dragger sometimes this will do okay how about that section and add some lines in there. Show the 3D, I mean, so the 2D section. And you can actually flip the cut side. Check. That's a visual change, that's not a cut. And again, if you wanted to change that, you'd come over here and deactivate it. Or you could edit the hatching. And when you do that, it'll pull up a menu with a lot of standard hatching on here. I'll pick copper and you can actually make the lines different. A lot of selections here. And you can actually change the angle also. That's a little small. That's a little bit better. Apply and close. So we're going to close that model. And the next one is a torus. New part. And I'm not going to pre-select anything to show that it can be done like that. I will pick on Revolve, and let's see which one I'm sketching. I'm sketching on the front datum. And you'll see that it's looking for it to define something. Right mouse button to find internal sketch, or just click on Placement. It takes more work. Default. Define. And then it says, where do you want to sketch? Well, we're going to sketch on the front datum plane and then middle mouse button or click on sketch. Now, this is a revolve, so right mouse button, axis of revolution, and I'm going to put a vertical axis in here, and then right mouse button, but there isn't a command here that I want to use for the geometry. So let's go up here to the ellipse and pick center and ends. Middle mouse button. I'm going to rotate around a little bit. Right mouse button, OK. And we can, if we wish, pull this back to any angle. Let's put it at 180 and flip it. Check. Now, if I zoom in here and I select one side and hold on my control key and select the other side, oops, like so, and then select the shell tool it'll shell these out like a little pipe. Now, I'm going to undo that last one. And instead, I'm going to go back in and click on the feature, right mouse button, and I'm going to edit its definition. I'm going to select over here, thin. In other words, thicken the sketch. And then I'm going to click on complete the command. And I have basically the same thing. I didn't keep the same thickness, but I can change that. But I only have one feature rather than this and a shell. So this would be a better way of doing it. 
So let's close that window. Go on to the next one. And in fact, I think we'll stop here and then we'll add the last models for um, the third part of the lecture.